Hello there, this is Charlene. You are listening to the TESAIO Open Mic Podcast, a podcast created by testers for testers. In the previous episode, the second one of this series about mastering board reporting based on TESAIO rules and professional expectations, our team leader Thomas helped us out with making the steps of board reports clearer enough to actually direct TESAIO customers, fellow testers, team leaders, or anyone that reads the report. You know, steps that can be followed along with easy and efficacy, like a recipe. What are good steps? Steps, good steps should be straightforward. They should be commands. They should use the neutral form. No one want to listen to I, I, I. Someone who follow it, it's more like a commandment. I would say, think of it like a recipe. You want to cook a meal, you want to bake some kind of like cookies. What you see is you get a list of steps you have to follow and they are, and here's the important part also, detailed. They are not too general. When you want to cook something, for example, it's say, open your oven with 220 degree or put in two eggs, 100 gram, 100 liter of something, it say exactly and it commands you. So I think the important part is to be neutral, give commands, make them short, easy and followable and detailed. So if something must happen exactly like this, like input something, like click a special thing for doing it, mention it. And don't write a long story. No one wants to read the story like, and then this will happen. Like you click on the button and then this window will open. Sure, it's open, but it's not a step. So give commands, make it short, and mention all the details in it. Welcome back, Thomas. How are you doing? I'm great today. How are you? Um, I'm very well, thank you so much. Always, always excited to go on these episodes for our tests and for our community. Me too. Oh, that's 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 good. So let's do our recap. Our uh, reminding audience, remember that the context of this mastering bug reporting series is the bug form and the way it should be filled out when reporting a defect, a bug on our platform. In this context, this third episode is about the actual and expected results sections of the bug report. But why are these sections important? R like really? I mean, what is an actual result? and what is an expected result. Can you help us out, Thomas? Please. Mm, I think we should go a little bit back to our first episode where I speak about the title and I say the title should help you to get an image out of mm. the bug when you read the title. I think even more the results should form this first, I think maybe slightly pl blurry image to make a real image. So mm. we have the rule and I think I mentioned it already in the another episode for the steps that a bug report should be only the written report. You must understand the whole bug out of the report when you read it without watching the video. And I think to understand it, the results are the great way to do. Here you can explain in the actual uh, expected results what you really expect and why you expect it when you do the last step before the bug. Mm, and good, good you explain one. really what happened in the actuary side. So you draw a picture, you doesn't only say something is not working. <laughs> no one can understand something or something is not working. You explain what you, let's say you explain what you see in your screencast. If you compare it with a mo movie, it's maybe this uh, closed captions. You will explain what happening for the one who doesn't watch it. So the one who doesn't watch it can draw an own image out of it. So you exactly know after you read the steps, the title and then the results, what the bug is about. Yes. And for this, there are some general things you have to think of. Like we have the rules in the academy and we say, look at it and learn from it. And all we talk is mostly comes from the academy here. And a good result is, for example, the expected result 
should never only be the opposite of the bug. When you do the mm. expected result, you should write what you expect when you do the last action before the bug. It must not even really connect it to the bug when the bug is something very different than what you expect. Yes, definitely. So only writing the yeah. It doesn't help you when you only write the opposite of the bug. It doesn't have any value. Then you can let this field away. But maybe the one the developer would like to know what you expect. So maybe even the button which you picked before is wrong. So they get mm. more information out of it. The same thing for the actuary side. Not only wrote right, like I say, to general, say doesn't work, incorrect, wrong. Give details. Always give details. To go yeah. into it, if you do a sorting, for example, mention the product which is wrong and why. Give numbers if it's connected to number. Give all the details. Draw a picture. Explain it. If you have a visual bug, for example, explain what is wrong. Draw the picture with words. What you see. If you have a picture in front of you and you have to explain it for someone else, you will use different words and make sentences out of it to explain it. But don't make what you often see. One of the biggest mistakes and more common coming is our testers right now doing to make longer reports and maybe longer results to make it look more valuable, which is not. Write mm. all the steps down, for example. It doesn't help. You have a steps area for the steps. Yeah. And copying the title is another thing. Some copy only the title, put the title back into the actual result. It doesn't give you any value, then you doesn't need all of the fields. The title, for example, like we say, and to recap a bit, should give mm. a short overview, a clear short overview of the bug. The details and to draw the full picture should be in the accurate result. Yes, agreed. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Excellent. With, uh, with this in mind, let's crack on with the example section of this episode. And the first one is a uh, low functional bar. And the title is when the user edit info and tap save, the user is directed to the main menu. The actual resource says, goes like this. The user has observed that once the user tapped save, the user is directed back to the main menu at the main screen. And the expected result says, the user has observed that once the user tapped save, the user is stayed remained at the personal data. There is a message save successfully, then return main menu at the main screen. I don't know if you notice the difference, but how did you like this? actual and expected results? Uh, not so much. You can see for the actual result, most of it, really most of it, is mostly the steps again. The user has observed. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't give us any useful information. So the user has observed. Doesn't say anything except makes the sentence longer. Longer. So the result yeah. here, we observed problems here and we report a problem. So we doesn't need to say the user has observed. If it's a bug report, it should be something like this. That mm -hmm. Once the user tap on save, is again the steps. You say mm -hmm. it's the last step and the report, if I look at it, is even what we have the last time. Last step is observe. Yes. Good. Uh, tap gender and select the non-binary. So the last step, at least in the list, say tap gender and select non-binary. It's not even connected to the results because in the results, the step, the user say, tap save. Mm -hmm. It's true. So yes. Something is missing. And the user is directed back to the main menu at then the website. At the main screen, yeah. So it's mostly the title again. It's a shortened version mm. of the title, some part, and add some additional to change only the title in the result. But mainly it's the same. It doesn't describe for my feeling the bug very well. Yes, it's not descriptive enough. I must see the screencast maybe to see more details to maybe make a better result. Hmm. But let's go on to the expected result for what we have here. We have the same follow-up, the user, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the steps again. So 80% of the expected result is the actual result. True. Even more. Expectation is somehow strange for me. If I do this action, for example, that I tap on save, I surely 
expect to stay and remain on the website I'm working on where I save and get the message for a successful save. I think the most part here is which is the expected result. There is a message uh, that say, say saved successfully. Exactly. That realistic is good from all of this. The rest of the part is the user stay remain at the page, blah, 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 the name of the page. Sure. I think this is mostly the opposite of the bug again. Do you mm. expect something different than being there on the page? So it's only making it longer for nothing without any more information. And then the rest of the part is then successfully return to the main menu at the name of the website again. No explanation why the tester expect to go back. First say stay there and then say he expect to go back to the main menu. I don't even understand why he expect to go back to the main menu. So. The expected result doesn't give me any much information except that it's blah blah with the steps and blah blah opposite of the bug. One sentence which is a part is acceptable and then blah blah again without any explanation. Overall I think both need to be worked on. It should be more descriptive in the actual result. The expected result should at least mention why the user think it should return to the main menu at this part. If it mentioned, for example, in the features, then write it. If something is more uncommon and unexpectable, but it should be like this because it's expected by the feature, then write it in the feature. Hmm. Correct. Also, maybe I haven't forgot to say before, but let's do it here. If you do an actuary site, avoid this nonsense phrases which are without any meaning, like there is no implemented functionality or it will bring loose for the customer. It doesn't have any value. Really, it only makes the report long. Especially mm. bad it is when you say describe an action before. Like someone clicks a button, a new page reload and then later you write the button doesn't show any implemented functionality. So you say mm -hmm. the opposite of what you described before. Oh yes, definitely. So, as a reader, I even ask myself, do you know what you're even writing when you do something like this? Did you mm. ever read it and know the meaning what you write? So avoid all these meaningless phrases. We have some examples about it in the academy. In one example, I think there is such a phrase, but doesn't take it as a good one. It makes it long, but not useful. Thank you, Thomas. Very insightful. Let's go with the second one that uh, we both like a lot. T uh, title, user cannot scroll the doctor's list after searching a doctor. And the actual result is the doctor's list isn't scroll scrollable. User cannot scroll to see another doctor. And the expected result is try to scroll down to see another doctor. That one I really like. If you look at it, it let's start with expected result. Mm. The expected result is a step. It's clearly <laughs> an action command and not mm. what you expect. Try to scroll down to see another doctor is nothing to expect. It's an action command. Yes. So I would say, uh, and I think, oh, after looking at it, it's even mm. missing in the uh, steps. The last step yes. is an insurance page shows the doctor list. Bad too, because it have already a result in it. So, useless information and it doesn't say something about scrolling down. Try to scroll it, for example, as a second step. Your expected result would be, for my example, instead of this, when the page is not scrollable down, you will say the image, what you see before you try to scroll, or the doctor list, you see there is a list of doctor, with doctors, and you expect that you can scroll down or something to view the whole list. I think that's a realistic expectation if you put this try to scroll down to see another doctor as a second step. Yes, definitely. So, you doesn't expect anything right now here because you only give a command. Let's go to the actual result. The doctor list isn't scrollable. User cannot scroll to see another doctor. Mm -hmm. Again, what is the difference? In between the two sentences. <laughs> mm, the first one, second one is already some kind like a result. Yes, mm -hmm. but mm. it doesn't say why it's not scrollable. Should it be scrollable? You doesn't get any information what you see. Is there a list with many more? 
Doctors is the only one. What do you expect there? He doesn't get any much information about the bug itself. True, it's say it's not scrollable. But why? There is some kind of like the why is always missing. Give some more information about it. Yeah, the details. The last part you said cannot... The same is... It's double. The doctor list isn't scrollable. User cannot scroll to see another doctor. Sure, when it's not scrollable, you cannot scroll. It's logical. So it makes only addition in the sentence, but not in the meaning. Title is okay for this. If I read the title, it has the same information like the actual result. The actual result doesn't describe it any much more. There's something important missing. The explanation. I cannot form. For the title, Okay, I had an expectation. I have a blurry picture. Mm -hmm. But the actual result doesn't fulfill to make it better. It's the same blurry picture. Yes. So I, for this report, I needed to look at the screencast to understand fully what's happening and to check why is it or why is it not. It should give some more information. The last example. So remove, uh, this is a visual one, and the title says remove button in the card are not aligned with each other and the actual result says the remove buttons are vertically misaligned relative to each other. The expected result is the remove buttons must be aligned relative to each other. Any thoughts? <laughs> uh, here we have the same case. The expected result is mostly the opposite only of the bug. Only mm. two or three are uh, changed out but even the same. Uh, sentence structure. The actual result is not very clear. To be honest, you cannot ex know how it's wrong. The remove buttons are vertically misaligned. What is misaligned? It's such a general wording. Are the mm. buttons shifted uh, horizontally, vertically? Exactly. Where? I don't know even where the buttons are shifted. What remove buttons? What do you really expect? You could write it in the expectation the remove buttons must be aligned relative to each other. Doesn't say anything. It's so general, it's what you naturally expect for everything. If you open a web page, you expect that the design is correct. Isn't it? Yes. It's nothing unnatural, especially after an action. Correct one, if I read the last action in the recom for you section, tap on one by one to add all the other accessories. Mm -hmm. So what I expect doing this normally, and my natural thing is when I do this, what I really expect in this case is the products, the uh, accessories I add will be added to my card. Isn't yes. that what you do, what you expect when you do the last step? I yes. It's not really connected. That's what you expect. It doesn't go anything about a visual problem here. So I think the tester wrote uh, that he expected to be aligned correctly but it's mostly the opposite of the bug I know and my feeling it's hard for something like a visual bug to make a good thing to make a mm. good expected result because everyone expected like I say a correct design yes so mostly will always write the opposite of it the fail version of it so like I say my expectation would be much different but not really connected to the bug. Is it valuable for <laughs> the bug? Is another mm. question. And I think that something maybe should be talked about more with different people and different expectations. If the real expectation is valuable here or is something other like that it should be correct and then at least explain what is correct and how inside the expected result for something like visual bugs because I think they are a little bit special to the rest of them because the actions often mm -hmm. are not connected to the visual problem. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and experience on how to construct actual and expected results better with our listeners, Thomas. I'm looking forward to seeing the new reports after three episodes full of tricks and tips. Thank you for inviting me here again. And I'm really excited to see you in the last one, in the attachment one, to evaluate one of them. I'm looking forward to it as well. And thank you for listening to the TSIO Open Mic Podcast. If you want to know more about us, what we do, how we do it, and build a QA testing career in the IT industry from scratch, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to listen to our private podcast, 
please join our Discord community directly from your Tesla account. Take care, stay safe, and stay tuned for the last episode of this series about the attachment of bug report sheets.